A lot of people wanted to know if these cheap microscopes on Amazon are any good for looking at knife edges or other stuff up close. I've even had some trolls telling me they can get better images than what I'm showing in my videos by simply using a $150 Amazon digital microscope. I can get similar blurry digital zoom as some of your footage with higher magnification from $150 Chinese microscope. So I went out and bought one. And, uh, you can't. But rather than just sit here and tell you you can't, let me show you why you can't get images like these out of a cheap digital microscope like this. So let's do a comparison with a 1500X cheap digital microscope to a professional macro photography and microscope photography setup, and briefly run you through why these microscopes may not be what you think they be. So first off, for these images, I'm going to use something for these photo examples that everyone is familiar with, a ballpoint pen. These are pretty universal across the board, so if you have one laying around, this will give you a pretty good indication on how close you can view something. The exact microscope I'm using here, I'll link below for reference purposes. It claims 1500x magnification, but we'll get back to this in a second. So first off, right out of the gate, this is a picture of our pen as close as this microscope will focus. And this is on the 20 megapixel camera setting. Basically, this is right out of the box what you're going to get which is not great, but I will show you how to get better results in a second. Now let's compare this image with a similar magnification on our macro lens. So this is what a Sony A6400 with a 3.5X macro lens looks like. This image is a series of 66 individual images stacked on top of one another and combined in Photoshop to one single photo. Now even this 3.5x macro is closer than our 1500x cheap microscope. And obviously the image quality is way better. But why is this? Why does a 3.5x simple macro lens get closer than a 1500x microscope? That's because the X factor, as we're going to call it, or the magnification ratio on these type of microscopes don't actually mean anything. Now to give you an idea as to why this is the case with these type of digital microscopes, let me first explain the X factor for camera lenses. First off, camera macro lenses are rated by how big the real life object is projected onto a full frame sensor. Let me explain. So this right here is a full frame camera sensor. So if we took a one, so if we took a one X macro lens, and took a picture of this bottle cap, that 1x macro lens would project the image of this bottle cap at a one-to-one -one size ratio, exactly one-to-one -one on that camera sensor. And here's what that looks like, a 1x magnification ratio lens on a full frame sensor. And if we shrunk this image down to its approximate real life size on the computer screen, the bottle cap and camera sensor are the same real life size. So this right here is exactly the same size as our camera sensor is in real life. Now you may be asking two things. What does that have to do with these cheap digital microscopes? And what happens if you blow the image up? No, I mean zoom into the image on say a computer. Well, it changes the magnification we're no longer at a 1x reproduction. Now something else you can run into is, well, what happens when you change the sensor size and you use a camera with a smaller sensor? Well, that also changes the magnification ratio. Or what happens if you're viewing the image on a small screen versus an image on a big screen? Well, that can also change the magnification ratio. Well, it does, but it, it also doesn't. We're not changing the magnification of the lens itself. We're just, we're changing the actual size that we're viewing the image. Now, the reason that you have to understand all this stuff with digital microscopes, which is basically what this thing is, it's essentially just a camera that projects an image onto a screen, is that a lot of times, or the vast majority of times, maybe all the times, the actual X factor or magnification factor doesn't have anything to do with how close you're actually viewing the image, simply due to all of the factors that we just talked about. Now, I don't know how they got to the 1500X magnification rating that they put on this microscope, but I'm willing to bet that it wasn't from viewing that image on this size of a screen. 
This is because the exact size and resolution of the screen you're viewing the image on affects the magnification ratio. Bigger screens and higher resolution give higher magnification ratios. Now what this means for you, the viewer at home, watching this and looking at these up close pictures is that exactly what you're viewing these images on, whether it's a phone or a giant TV mounted to the wall or maybe an iPad, a screen like this, that's gonna affect the ultimate magnification ratio as well as the exact resolution of the screen that you're viewing on and the resolution of the actual video that you're watching, which is most likely 4K. Now for me, sitting at my computer at home, I have access to the entire, in this case, 24 megapixel image on my computer. Or if I'm using another camera, the entire 63 megapixel file size, which means that I actually can get a higher magnification with more resolution sitting at my house than I can actually share with you sitting at your house, unless we crop into the picture. Cropping allows us to use the camera's resolution to zoom into the picture even more, which even further complicates the exact magnification ratio that we're actually using or what you are actually seeing sitting at home. So how they calculated this image from our Amazon microscope to be 1500X, the world may never know. But just like anything, the operator skill often plays a role in getting the best results. So I wanted to see if I could use my years of macro photo experience to improve on this original image. So because we now know that these digital microscopes are basically just cheap cameras projecting an image onto a screen, the question now becomes, how do we get the best image possible out of these cameras in order to get the highest magnification ratio? So one big downside to these cheap microscopes is actually the lighting. We typically don't want super bright LED lighting creating all kinds of reflections on the object we're viewing. These reflections give us very bright spots in some areas and very dark spots in others. And if we adjust for these bright spots, we end up making the entire image too dark. Now, because this is a digital microscope, essentially a camera projecting the image onto a screen, we run into something called dynamic range. Now, the dynamic range is the difference between the brightest part of the image and the darkest. The dynamic range is rated in stops of light. Now, without going down into another rabbit hole here, we simply need to know that better cameras have better dynamic range. So with this being a very cheap camera from this digital microscope, we have much poorer dynamic range than a professional camera would. So among other things, this camera, the cheap camera, has trouble capturing these light and dark areas, making lighting the object very tricky. However, one thing that we can do is to try to diffuse the light using a piece of tracing paper. I blacked out all of the overhead light using the included hood and relit the pen using diffused light. This gives us a much softer light and reduces the bright and dark spots in the image. So here's some examples of the pen before diffusion. In this image, we have quite a bit of overexposed blown out areas where we can't see. Next, even if we try to fix this by moving our light source away, because of our limited dynamic range, we end up with areas that are way underexposed and we still have areas of overexposure. But if we diffuse the light source, which essentially makes the source bigger, we can get much more of the object within our exposure range. We still have areas that are overexposed, but this is a much better image than we started with. Now, another area where these cheap digital microscopes struggle is something called depth of field. Now, before I get all of the microscope and photography people coming out of the woodwork telling me that I'm glancing over a whole crap load of information in this video, realize that I know we're essentially doing that on purpose. We are just touching on some of these subjects. There have been books written on this subject because the actual lens, which we're not even going to discuss in this video, that the camera is viewing the object through has a lot to do with this. We're not even going to talk about it. Why? Because it doesn't matter for the purpose of this video. This video is specifically just to give you a general idea on why these cheap digital microscopes have the limitations that they do. And yet again, trying to not go down another rabbit hole, depth of field is basically the area of the image that is in focus. Using higher magnification means the depth of field gets smaller or the area that is in focus gets smaller. So when viewing some items like this pen, only the very tip of the pen ends up being in focus. Now we can actually fix this issue using something called focus stacking. 
which basically means we take a bunch of images in sequence with different parts of the item in focus for each image. We then stack these images together using software to get one single in focus image. Like this one where we combined about 95 individual images and combined it together into one complete in focus image. Now this is why for most of these digital microscopes you really won't be able to get photos that look like this. It's simply not possible to get this close up to something and take a single picture and be able to see what it is that you're trying to look at. Since the depth of field gets so small for some higher magnifications that an individual picture will just look like a blurry mess, with depths of fields getting down to just a couple of microns across. You physically won't be able to see what you're trying to look at since the depth of field would be too small for the vast majority of things. Now you certainly can do some basic photo stacking with this microscope. Here's an image of our pen that is six images combined and it looks pretty good. We certainly do have more in focus than we did before. But it's not easy making such small focus adjustments with this geared rail the microscope is attached to. So I think what the vast majority of you probably watching this are wondering is, can you use this thing to analyze knife edges to see whether or not you've removed the burr? Something super simple like that. And the answer is kind of. So this is about the best real time analyzing quality you will get. This is certainly better than nothing and you can see a very small burr along the apex, but you do have to look closely and it could be easily missed using this sort of real life live uh, on the screen image quality. A better option is to take a photo of the edge with this microscope, load it into a computer and look at the apex there instead. You definitely get better image quality this way and can see a lot more, but it is more time consuming. So here's a couple of other things to give you an idea on the magnification you can get out of this cheap digital microscope. Here's the date on a penny and the date on a dime. Now again, keep in mind this is a 20 megapixel uncropped image that you're probably viewing in 1080p or 4K. And we can get closer by cropping in, but in a comparison, this is a Sony a7R5 with a simple 1x macro lens. And you can see that when we crop in, the quality out of this simple 1x macro lens versus the cheap digital microscope is still better. And then one more photo of a KME 50 grit diamond stone. This is our DM9 digital microscope and this is our Sony A6400 about 10 stacked images with a 2.5x macro lens. So I think the answer to this is well these things are certainly better than nothing. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can see a lot more with one of these than you can with your naked eye. But for the $120 to $150, I think if you're just looking for something to quickly analyze knife edges, like we do here on this channel, you're much better off spending that $120 to $150 on something like a professional quality jeweler's loop. Unless you're specifically interested in capturing pictures or video. In which case, you're kind of stuck with this in that price range. Otherwise, I think if you really want to cheap out, you can uh, just buy a simple, inexpensive uh, $9 to $20 jeweler's loop and have much better results than one of these. Anyway, I hope this video helped you realize kind of how complicated like ultra macro photography and videography can be and realize that we are literally just scratching the surface here on this topic and we didn't even begin to discuss everything. I hope that this at least shows you some of the limitations that you're going to have with a setup like this in terms of getting decent quality photos and or video out of a very inexpensive system. Anyway, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.